me feeling like I'm academics. Can't ride That's no street shit. <laughs> or like street rumors. I'll just call it that. Uh, so. There's a video. Don't ask me how I remember all this shit. There's a video. Young Thug Donovan Nut Thomas Birdman. Oh man, we probably can't find it. So there's a video of like Birdman of young of Young Thug introducing Birdman to Donovan Nut Thomas, basically saying, "Yo, this is a guy who's behind Rich Homie Quan. This is a guy who like we're we're gonna have to do the business with to get Rich Homie Quan, and then we could do this Rich Gang shit, right? I don't know how that business ends up going." But clearly, that business doesn't go well. Birdman's not pleased. Young Thug is not pleased. Right? Now, clearly, there's other shit going on. The, the associates of, of, of Nut also is getting into it. The associates of Sex Money Murder slash YSL. So there's a lot of moving parts. Do you recall the video shit that posted in Dutch Who the artist whose video it was? It was Mr. William video. And the Ronald Metropolitan, whose video? This is Donovan Nut Thomas' father. She was at. It was supposed to be where we was at, at the at the place where we was at, and he kind of. Going back to the video shoot, once you got there, you said you saw Jacquees at the video shoot. Yes. Remember Jacquees was like Rich Gang too? Once you saw Jacquees at the video shoot, um, you said that that's demeanor change. Yes. Right. What, if anything, did he do while at the video shoot? He got on the telephone and made a phone call. Okay. And after that phone call, what, what did you all do? We ended up leaving. On left, how would you describe your observation of his demeanor? Anger. Okay. By the way, this again, this is the father of Donovan Nut Thomas who was testifying in the Young Thug case. So he's like giving a little bit of insight on that relationship. Did your son ever try to squash the conflict? He said he was going to try to squash it before it's been known. Hold on, that was Miss Westmore. What's the base for your objection, madam? All right, what's your objection, Mr. Steele? I'll adopt it. I sustain the objection. Okay. This is father right over here, by the way. Hold on. This is where you see Birdman get introduced. It, it, let me say this. Birdman is one of the smartest but luckiest niggas in rap history. You see all... The, there was a pos... You know his name is listed as... In the, his name and, and, and Young Thug's name is listed as Individual 1 and 2 in the indictment against P.B. Roscoe for shooting against for shooting up um, Wayne's bus. He escapes that, no indictment, no arrest. Even though after Pee Wee Roscoe did that, she, after he shot up uh, um, Wayne's bus, he gets on the phone with two people right after. Birdman and Wayne. No, no, no Birdman and Young Thug. He escapes indictment. I think that was the moment that 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 um Birdman said, peace out of land, I'm good. Because he knew if he continued to play in that playground... His name was going to come up in a RICO charge. And Birdman got out of that. So you're going to see Birdman's name a lot, at least initially. But as the beef and as the war continues, and thug niggas is like that. So they're continuing this war. Birdman's name just gets out of the picture. So Birdman, which some people in Atlanta feel like he came in and fucked up whatever they had going on because Birdman came in on some big ball CEO shit saying, I want him and him. I want both of y'all to sign on my label. Remember, Thug's contracts were all fucked up. Thug was signed to like five niggas at first. But none of them cared that much, and Thug was operating as like his own man. So Birdman was able to, or or eventually going to be able to claim uh, um, to get Thug. Thug was looking up to Birdman because he's, he's blinded by, oh my God. Birdman is the guy who put on Wayne. I look up to Wayne. If I want to be the next Wayne, I got to get with Birdman. So it's so you got Thug in the pocket. Thug gonna go. Thug gonna get down. You realize Rich Homie Quan is a good part of the puzzle, but Rich Homie Quan 
it's not necessarily him. It's the people behind him. They're not getting down. So, so one thing that's on like, that people don't realize, Birdman is one of the smartest niggas possible. He got the fuck. He he popped in Atlanta. All that slime shit, all that this. He was there doing all that shit, extra blooded out, throwing up signs. As soon as he realized he dodged that one indictment and it was the Pee Wee Roscoe shit, he said, I'm going to catch all y'all niggas later. <laughs> I'm a billionaire. I do not got tired of being in jail. I'm going to catch all you niggas later. Peace. <laughs> So, look. Now, sitting here, do you know why that picture was posted to your son's page in January 2nd of 2015? That's after Birdman meets Nut. Nut controls Rich Homie Kwan. So I can remember, he, he, I think he just posted because he posts him, uh, he texts him. And hold, he on, just, hold on, sir. Oh. Faces? Speculation. I stand you. I stand you. Okay. okay. Now, in the summer of 2014, is that the only time you knew your son to be in L.A. with Birdman? Yes. Now, where's the phone? Oh, okay. Skip through a little bit. Okay, they have a little sidebar. Here we go. Now, leading up to January 10th, 2015, um, did you have any knowledge of this being concerned for his safety leading up to January 10th of 2015? No. I will rule the objection. Did you observe your son acting in a manner that he had concern for his safety? No, not for his safety. I will rule the objection. As Mr. Sherman. Now, when it's specifically taken to January 10th, 2015, did you speak with Donovan that day? Yes. Did you all have plans for the day? Yes. I think that's the day he died. To watch the uh, playoff football game that evening. And where were you going to watch the <coughs> playoff game? I'm sorry. Uh, where were you going to watch the playoff games? Uh, we were going to watch it at a sports bar and grill on Memorial Drive. And... Do you recall what time you all planned to meet that? About 8 o'clock that night, somewhere in there. Was it just going to be you and Donovan, or was anyone else going to join you? No, it was, it was, it was going to be some more people there, too. Okay. Um, again, so remember, this is 2015. So this cements that no matter how rich homie Quan feels, there has now been bloodshed. So January 10th, 2015. Remember, Donovan Nutt Thomas meets Birdman 2014. I guess they're trying to do some business. By the way, I'm no, I'm no implicating Birdman nothing. Bird, Birdman was just trying to get a musical group out of Atlanta. There's other things going on, but that doesn't work. Rich, uh, uh, um, Rich Homie Quan and Thug, they're kind of on opposite sides because Thug's people ain't really... And Thug ain't jacking what's going on with that. Also, th there was supposed to either some run-ins or some disrespect. Then on the 10th of January, 2015, and think about that with Rich Homie Kwan's career. Donovan Nutt Thomas gets killed, which means no more can Rich Homie Kwan be around Thug. That music shit is over now. Somebody just died. You get what I'm saying? Burma has nothing to do with this. Like, Burma has li literally nothing to do with this. I'm, I'm trying to tell you how there was a moment. Young Thug, this is a Young Thug thing, not a Burma man thing. Young Thug had a decent relationship with Donovan Nutt Thomas. He introduced Donovan Nutt Thomas, the guy who ran all the business for, for Rich Homie Kwan, to, to, to Birdman on a yacht the year before. So think about it. If the state is saying... Young Thug killed, or Young Thug is responsible for Donovan Nutt Thomas being killed. Something went down in the span of a year that made everything go from cordial to kill that nigga, if the state is right. We don't know Young Thug to do anything. And by the way, I I'm saying this categorically, Birdman has nothing to do with this. He would have been indicted. Okay? So, that's the father talking. 
There's actually, I don't know if you guys ever seen this. This is the video inside the barbershop. Uh, um, Donovan Nutt Thomas is outside the barbershop in front. This is when he's killed on January 10th, as I said, 2015. I don't think there's audio, but obviously the police have this video, right? So people are in the, and the drive-by happens. Now, I, I, I don't know if there's a video outside, but there is some type of other video that, 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 that corroborates the vehicle used, and that's why they're trying to link that back to Thug. That's why YSL Woody's saying, uh, 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 yeah, Thug did rent a vehicle that looked exactly like that, but that was for me, because I wanted to go shoot some niggas. Whatever, right? But, it, it, again, if we're, if we're sticking on the rich homie Quan path here, Rich homie Quan is with some street niggas over this side. Young Thug, he a street nigga. I'm not saying Rich homie Quan's not a street nigga. But Rich homie, you know, Young Thug is calling shots and doing his thing over here. When there is now bloodshed, everybody got to go to their corner. You can't still be like, oh, nah, we're just doing some music together. It's over at, at that point. It's officially over. So match that to, to Rich homie Quan's career. It'll make sense. Gunshots fire, people run, kids are running. Damn, yeah. yo, gangsters don't give a fuck. They don't even care who's in the barbershop. You got little kids running. That's a little girl running. They don't give two fucks. So they they then kill Donovan Nut Thomas outside. You get what I'm saying? This guy's smart. He's just like, just lay down, nigga. I feel you, brother. Okay. People are still running to the back. I don't know if there's still bullets being fired. But yeah, everybody's running away from the door. The drive-by just occurred. Maybe some bullets even flew through the um, the window, but it don't look like nobody's hurt, um, at least in the barbershop, right? Then you see somebody pop up. These are all people of interest who, also people who came into the uh, the, the thing. I don't think there's there's no dead body. You see the kids kind of pop back out, right? Leaning that laying down outside? Um, no, I didn't see that. Can you rewind? Okay. So now, and actually, ironically enough, this is 8.15. So the shooting happens at 8.08 .08 and at 8.15. So literally eight minutes later after the shooting, the police are there. The police are there pretty quick. Got to give them credit, right? Because you see, look, you see police things at 8.14. So 808, so six minutes later, the police are there. I'm, I'm surprised the car got away if, they, if the police are there that quickly, but probably nobody described the car that was doing the drive-by, right? Like, you're not looking at the car like, let me just get the license plate, right? Niggas firing bullets. Okay, cool. And essentially, the police now, yeah, they're, they're doing an investigation. Uh, I don't believe there's any, or maybe there were, maybe there were um, footage for outside the barbershop, but clearly they're not going to put that on YouTube because that would show him being actually killed. So anyway, I say that to say within the Rich Homie Quan story, the Rich Homie Quan story is really tied very directly to what's happening with Young Thug. His career as an artist is essentially fucked up because he could no longer fuck with the Thug. You I, I, and y'all remind me, tell me if I'm right or I'm wrong. Maybe a music video dropped afterwards with them, but it was got to be old. But we didn't see any more public appearances with them. You get what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, and, and there was like a few other things. Give me one second. Okay. Now I'm going to play this. I'm going to play an end of sentence video, which is a... Uh, Shout out to my boy 1090 Jake, but it has one of the videos I, I, I want to. Man, what's up, everybody? Now, this is, I'm playing this because this has the video that I don't know who recorded, but it was Young Thug talking to a detective. And again, Rich Homie Quan kept his street. He never told fans why he didn't really fuck with Thug. He just made it seem like, oh, yeah, it's because of the gay stuff. I'm not into that. It was never because of the gay stuff, right? Like, you know, everybody in Atlanta knew Young Thug was trolling with all the gay shit, and they knew he was a gangster. 
Rich Homie Quan rather than run to the net and explain to the fans, yo, yo, this nigga homies killed my man, allegedly. He didn't say it. Obviously, Rich Homie Quan didn't say that. He just kind of fell back and just acted like, oh, no, I'm a solo artist. He kept it really straight because I would have been squealing like a motherfucker, right? <laughs> Um, then a video comes out later of him talking to the police as the police, you know, remember the police was trying to solve Donovan Nutt Thomas's murder for a long time. Cause what happened after Donovan Nutt Thomas gets killed, mad murder, mad shooting start happening. And you have to realize some of the street niggas, remember, uh, um, um, Rich Homie Kwan was signed to think it's a game entertainment, which was headed up by fly, which was the CEO. They had their issues afterwards, but, but. Who who was his label mate? Y. Fenlucci. Now the Inglewood, uh, 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 um, was it Inglewood Family Bloods or uh, I, 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 whatever those Inglewood Mafia people, right? Uh, or Inglewood Family people, um, they were that's Rich Homie Quan's gang. Which by the way, they got indicted later. After Donovan Nut Thomas gets killed, I, I'm gonna assume it's probably because he was one of the business people working with that group. He was putting money in their pockets this and third. Mad shootings happen. I think the police even say like dozens of shootings happen and they realize to properly investigate those shootings, they got to go to the origin. And the origin is Donovan Nutt Thomas dying. They arrested people for doing the Donovan Nutt Thomas murder, but they arrested the wrong people at first. And obviously people are dying left and right. The more time you get away from the, that murder, you're losing evidence. You're losing people who have credible memory and, Obviously, people in the streets don't want to cooperate. So they get to a point that Fonnie Willis puts, pushes the button and says, we're indicting Young Thug, right? And we're going to bring this Donovan Nutt Thomas murder as a part of it. Um, subsequently, after this uh, um, happened, Rich Homie Kwan was on a witness list. But clearly, he's not a, a witness to any of these things. I mean, clearly, he could talk about, yo, yeah, me and... Yeah, I knew Donovan or Thomas, I knew Thug, but he doesn't know about no shootings, no street stuff. So they don't end up calling Rich Homie Kwan to the stand. However, there is a video that leaks of Rich Homie Kwan talking to a detective. And that, and, and he's basically like, not, let me just play this. Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rock. Now, I kind of say this to say, and I know, you know, y'all young thug fans going to get on my ass and, and, and think I'm anti-thug. I'm not. Young thug fucked up a lot of shit in Atlanta because we get it. He's a, He was a super tough nigga, but he started doing all the super tough shit. You know what I mean? Like, once you start making money, niggas usually stop doing the bullshit. Atlanta got so hot and the people around him start being looked at by the police so much they had to pick him up. Do you get what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of niggas who they used to do hood shit, get super rich, get to superstar level and leave. Right? I think that's where Dirk is. Dirk has left. Dirk has realized after his last album run, he's had pop level sus uh, um, success why still keep stoking the fire in Chicago? You get what I mean? He's left. Young Thug just stayed. You got to remember, in 2015, they locked up. Like, they went in Young Thug's house searching for some shit. They found a cell phone. Remember, like, they had to throw out the cell phone? They were always investigating Thug for, like, mad. Because the streets were talking. They were saying Young Thug was having his cronies. And him and his mans were getting niggas clapped. So the, the, the police always wanted to get him. But the police broke some rules, too. They, they went into his house, and, and they didn't have a warrant for something, but they confiscated it and broke into it two years later and tried to use his evidence, and Brian Steele spanked that shit. Yo, whoa, whoa, you can't use that. In the original warrant, he didn't say you could take that. Also, also for the confiscated items at the time, not only were y'all not investigating what y'all supposedly found on there, uh, uh, the judge had given an order that y'all had to return that. So what, what the fuck? So, again... You know, um, Young Thug should have knew the police was on his head. Like, you know what I mean? They were on his head, right? Anyway, and by the way, I do think if we go down the Young Thug route, I think Young Thug finally started doing interviews. Young Thug was cleaning it up, honestly. He was cleaning it up, and that's why the indictment also comes down because Fonnie Willis realizes that he's not going to give them any more easy shit to get him locked up. But he has a trail and a history of allegedly being involved in mad shit. 
So right when he's cleaning it up, they said, all right, since you're not going to keep doing dirt and give us more information that we can get the craziest case on you possible, let's lock you up now, right? Anyway, here we go. Rocking with me, and for this video, we're going to be speaking on rich homie Quan snitching. At this point, I'm not even surprised. Not only has more paperwork dropped in the YSL case. By the way, this is Donovan Nut Thomas right here too, right? Look. Snitching. At right here. this point, I'm not even surprised. Not only see Donovan Nut Thomas is right here. This is him. I don't know what handshake this is. One of y'all gang experts could tell me what, what handshake this is. He has more paperwork dropped in the YSL case, but an audio recording just dropped of none other than rich homie Quan spitting a whole verse to law enforcement about Young Thug. Okay, so now, by the way, I don't know if he was talking to a detective or if, you know, sometimes niggas get around people and just start talking shit. I don't think this was was um <coughs> was him talking to a police, but he's definitely feeling comfortable to talk to whoever he's talking to. I think people thought he was talking to the police. That's why they said Rich Homie Quan snitch. But no, Rich Homie Quan was venting about the reality of what was going on. Then Rich Homie Quan spitting a whole verse to law enforcement about Young Thug. So, go back to that. He says, after that, shit gets hot in Atlanta. Young Thug isn't, Young Thug is moving around, isn't staying in Atlanta. Young Thug basically goes to Miami to let shit cool off. Now, the broke niggas, the YSL Woodies, are still in Atlanta shooting niggas, right? Basically on the behest of, or under the, 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 the umbrella of YSL or whatever it is, but Young Thug, the boss who got the money to move around and got to make sure if you just clipped, allegedly, one of their head honchos, they want to get one of your head honchos and guess who it is? It's you, Thug. So he moves around. Rich homie Quan basically confirms what I was saying. After Nut gets killed, he don't see Thug again because you can't be, this is real street shit now. Y'all can't do fake rap shit no more. He says the first time he runs into him is, is in Miami. They had a show. And he says, he confronts Thug and says, Thug, I'm going to be a man. And I'm going to just ask, did you have anything to do with him getting killed? Now, I don't even know why I even asked that. Like, it's not like Young Thug would be like, yeah, I, yeah, of course. I told my niggas to kill him. Like, come on, who's going to say that, right? No, no, no. Right. See, my hand was on the spot. I saw him. We had a show together. I was like, I'm just asking you to tell him. Everybody been talking about it. I'm going to just be a man and ask myself. Right. It's crazy, man. It's no door. 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 He says, we know he got something to do with it. We just can't prove it. He said, I'm just being real with y'all. That's how much I love Nut Man. No diddy on that, by the way. But what he's saying, he loves Donovan Nut Thomas. That shit was real fucked up. While it may be hard for some to understand Rich Homie speaking a language native to the streets of Atlanta, what he's speaking on is the very murder that would cause the fall of YSL. I got one of the biggest bloods in America with me, my You did. Atlanta, Georgia. This is the yacht. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jake got it. This is the yacht. I think Birdman's yacht that he introduces Donovan Nut Thomas to Birdman. Birdman got to do business with him to get rich homie Quan. You know? There are shell casings up and down the street. Now I'm told one of the men who was shot, a man in his mid-20s, is in critical condition, but that his status could change for the worse overnight. Rich homie Quan's former manager, Donovan Thomas, who went by the name Peanut or Big Nut, was a member of the Englewood family Bloods. His 2015 assassination outside of an Atlanta barber shop would result in a back and forth war between Englewood family and sex money murder. 
The majority of the violence will be documented in the YSL indictment. Prosecutors allege Young Thug was in communications with sex money murder leader Kyle Ory, who's currently serving a life sentence in Georgia State Prison. Big Note was said to have snitched against members of the gang, and prosecutors allege Young Thug orchestrated his death by renting the vehicle YSL members would later use to commit the drive-by that took Nut's life. Now, Chad, if we really think about this, if I'm trying to sign you and you're signed to some other guy, and the other guy, my boss, is trying to talk to him to get you out of your deal that you could be in a, in a, in a group with me, and your boss is not agreeable. Usually what happens in normal business is Y'all keep doing. Y'all keep going, negotiating back and forth. You offer more money or whatever, more favorable terms. Maybe you could get the deal done. The deal don't get done. So what? You wait till the person is out of a deal. Then you get that person when they're a free agent. Well, not in the streets. Uh, the easiest way is kill the nigga, and now he's a free agent. Okay, <laughs> unfortunately. After the hit, Thug and the alleged shooters would take a trip to Miami to lay low. Rich. Oh yeah. Oh oh okay okay yeah. So, so Thug brought all the shooters there. Tommy Kwan would speak with investigators explaining he never saw Thug in Atlanta after the murder. He was going to confront him at a Miami show over the rumors that Thug played a part in Nut's death. Rich Homie would allege people knew Thug had something to do with it, but they couldn't prove it. He'd then say he isn't a rat and he isn't telling. He's just keeping it real with investigators. Rich Homie would also allege Thug was jealous of the relationship he had with Nut, as Thug wanted to control the Atlanta music scene, and Nut was keeping Rich Homie at a distance from Thug. Exactly. That's why when Nut dies, they eventually lock up wrong people for Nut's murder. Young Thug in his mind says, I got away with this. This is if he did. I'm not saying he did. So now Young Thug is heating up even more as an artist. A lot of the street nigga backing and finances behind Rich Homie Kwan has dissipated. And every nigga in Atlanta, because you, you know the streets talk. They know what happened. They see that Young Thug is winning this really a street feud. All the DJs stop playing Rich Homie Kwan. All the street rappers, because somebody died. It's like... Think about, and this is even worse. Like, I know we think about, like, King Von and, or say Dirk and, and Young Boy, right? Like, a rapper can't really do a song with Young Boy and go right to Dirk and do a song, right? And they're two niggas from two different cities. Imagine in the same city, and you're from the same city, you can't keep doing music with Rich Homie Kwan if you're going to be cool with, with Thug. And... Yo, Rich Homie Kwan don't want to keep doing music with you if, if you're going to be doing music with Kwan. So who, end, who ends up winning? Thug. This wasn't all Rich Homie would speak on, though. Two pictures of the interview transcripts would make its way to News Made It. Rich Homie would state him and Thug frequented or resided in the same condominium leading up to Nud's death and that they were cool. But after the murder, they drifted apart. 14 minutes into the interview, Rich Homie would speak on his truck being shot up and immediately calling Young Thug, alleging his people were behind it. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. Um, Rich Homie Kwan statements, news made it. Yeah, let me see if we could probably find it some way. Where is it at? Statements. Young Thug, shut up. I'm trying to see if I can find it. Is it this? Uh, no. There's actually. Um, uh, fuck. I know News Made It got deleted a couple of times. Hopefully somebody got like the, the fucking thing. Anyway, yeah. So Rich Home. So remember. Rich homie Quan, the reason why he ain't locked up on none of that shit, again, I'm not saying he not like that, but he ain't moving like Thug is moving. Thug is moving like, 
Pablo Escobar. So they end up shooting up Rich Homie Kwan's vehicle. Remember, Rich Homie Kwan confronted Thug and said, did you have something to do with it? I'm pretty sure uh, he told him, nah, nigga, fuck you talking about, nah. Then Rich Homie Kwan vehicle gets shot, shot up. So he says, he tells the cops, yo, I called Thug and be like, yo, Thug, nah, bro, yo, what's going on? Nigga, nigga just shot up my car. Nigga, you trying to kill me? Like, this is what's going on behind the scenes. He then speak on his father's barber shop being shot up. Then, then his bar, then his father's barber shop gets shot up. And no one who ever did it had something to do with Nut's death. Four months before Nut was killed, a gunman would open fire inside of a barber shop, striking Rich Homie's father four times. Now, when we get to here, because that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like I hate, I, I, I I'm not trying to disrespect nobody who's cool with Quan. But this is why I say that Quan's career is unfortunate. Young Thug was bullying these niggas. Like, this is why I love y'all Young Thug fans, but y'all be acting like this nigga's a saint. Young Thug was bullying niggas, having niggas under pressure. Nigga, put it like this. If if I was if I was to show me Quan, nigga, I would just, I, I would have booked a room at the police station telling on Thug. The nigga killed your manager. The nigga, sh nigga allegedly may have had a hand in shooting up your car. And then your dad gets shot. Cause, sh sh bro, they're targeting you, nigga. I, nigga, I'd be, a, nigga, I would be at, nigga. Just give me a room at the police station, nigga. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, to try to put make this sh shit 360. Why so Woody, rich homie Quan, barbershop. Now we all know why so Woody is a shooter for Young Thug. Why is he on the stand? Because after he done did a couple drills for Thug, he feels Thug is throwing him away. Thug don't fuck with him like that. He feels like Thug is acting like he's expendable. Keep in mind, Woody's putting his life on the line. Woody's like a hitman. Yo, if Thug say, yo, I need this done, he not asking why. He's ready with the gun. So when he feels like Thug is not valuing him as such, he starts to feel a way about Thug. He starts to low-key low resent Thug. Then almost at a point start to think, man, I'm going to kill that nigga Thug. That's the thing. They always say the thing about having shooters or, or, or your dogs, when you stop, that's why I said, a nigga's only as loyal as his last meal. If you ain't feed him last, expect no loyalty. Young Thug got a nigga like Woody who will kill a nigga for him. At some point, Woody starts thinking, Young Thug, is taking him for granted, doing too much, putting his life in danger and his freedom, and he's not feeling valued. You feel what I'm saying? Anyway, he he tells on Thug in a bunch of uh, um, interrogation footages. So he tells on Thug. Thug gets indicted. Now, because <clears throat> Woody want to be a gangster snitch, he switches up his story. And he says, oh, I was just lying then. Here's the thing about everybody who keep praising praising Woody. Y'all hear me explain it, right? I'm not in Atlanta. You think these people are that confused? No, nigga. You're, you still want to be in the streets. That's why you're acting like you got immunity. You still want to be in the streets. That's why you're acting like the shit you told investigators weren't true. Back then when you were talking to investigators, you never in a million years thought they was going to be played in open court. And you didn't think it would be this viral. So here it goes. So now he's trying to cap about the rich homie Quan father shooting. Basically, by the way, Young Thug isn't like they, they, they don't have the things to link Young Thug to rich homie Quan's car getting shot up. So they they investigated, they, they in, not interrogated, they questioned rich homie Quan. This is why I keep saying. Rich homie Kwan ain't no bitch, he ain't no nothing. Because I would have made sure Young Thug would have been on death row. That nigga would have been getting a needle today with me with a smile on my face behind that glass window. Rich homie Kwan, he won't even tell the fans like, bro, why y'all keep asking me about Thug? I think this fuck nigga trying to get me killed and he got my dad's barbershop shot at. He don't even say that. He's keeping it gangster. He's keeping it in the streets. Me, I wouldn't keep it in the streets. We keep it in the courtroom and the precinct at that point. Okay? So he's 
Rich homie Quan, that's so why I say you can't say Rich homie Quan no bitch. Because he's he's saying he's literally keeping it in the streets, right? Now, police go to Rich homie Quan. Bro, you're a victim. They shot up your car. Who you think may have did it? Who you They can't get Rich homie Quan on any signed affidavit that would put Thug in the crosshairs. Like, they did record a conversation, but it's just seen as an interview. It's not a signed affidavit, right? If he signs an affidavit, that's him snitching, right? This is him talking to the cops, probably like, yo, man, y'all niggas do y'all job, man, but y'all niggas know what's up the streets talking. You know that nigga, you, you know who did it. Like, that's what he's saying in that leaked video, right? He's like, bro, y'all do y'all job. Like, but niggas know what, who did it, but y'all got to go prove it. But he wouldn't give them a statement. That would be a signed affidavit. You would see his signature at the end of it, which we, which we don't have. We just have a list of a, we have an interview that supposedly was taped, Right? which the police is saying, I had this conversation, this is good for probable cause, but we can't use this up to a certain point because the witness himself, who was alive at that time, Rich Homie Kwan, ain't attesting to this, which that's when Rich Homie Kwan would have been used in this goddamn trial because if he had signed that statement, now you got to come in court and say it. Okay, anyway. So now, um... In the RICO case against Young Thug, they don't include a lot of the things that it's rumored or in the streets they've been saying that 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 Young Thug try to get done to Rich Homie Quan, right? And this is why, you know, the, the the new gangster snitch right here who's now trying to like switch up his words, basically then says I'm gonna throw a monkey wrench in the state's case by acting like I'm the one who did the. The rich homie Quan shooting, but it was for another is for another situation over some guy named Threat. Here we go. Um, you were asked by investigator Dennis about the shooting of Rich Homie Quan's father's barbershop, correct? You say when? January twenty eighth, two thousand fifteen, during the interviews that we've been talking about. All right. Okay. The interviews that you've said you lied in, right? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I'm gonna published as published ds 22 a which is states 378 yankee bravo and the time is 724 00 to 727 30. all right so i think i think they're going back to the uh, interview i believe Okay, and on the screen, that's... The By the way, again, I know some of y'all, you know, again, we, we are reflecting on the life, um, career, and death of uh, Rich Homie Kwan. If you're wondering what we're talking about, if you just tuned in, to fully understand why his career um, was at the place it was at in 2024, it goes directly into the Atlanta scene and what was going on that is at the core of this YSL trial. Yes. Even though you've never seen him in court, a lot of the reason why this investigation um, into um, YSL in a RICO capacity happened is because of some things that happened behind the scenes that we never knew about with Rich Homie Kwan, obviously the death of Donovan Thomas, and obviously what happened uh, uh, made it to the place where Young Thug and Rich Homie Kwan could never be cool again and they could never be around each other again that's you investigator dennis investigator gaither correct yes okay thank you damn rich on corner like you got twenty five thousand here pay kill it's like yeah. from the picture you just showed me nah tell me who just got shot the other night oh in, in the car over yeah. there okay he got twenty five thousand here we're gonna get to rich homie kwan's father's barbershop in a second this is when allegedly supposed his car got shot up. Trevante Turner is now sadly deceased, correct? All right. When you were talking about him being shot back in 2015, he was also shot in 2015, correct? Yes. Okay. And that was Shell Kell who shot? I'm not for sure who shot him. Okay. Okay. I take you. Who did? Just reach on the corner because he be telling me. So I'm, I'm trying to reach on corner, like, but you, you got any in your house. You saying you got shit on my house, bro. Right. I reach on corner, like, he's like, bro, 
They just look like that, bro. You like, we the same shit. Like, like, but still, bro, you out here hitting these niggas, this and that. So it's on call, like, um, bro, it ain't, it ain't dead. We the same shit. I just can't turn my back on. Like, it ain't dead, bro. You got, you support these niggas, bro. So the more you support them, the more they gonna come out and do that. If you leave them alone. And in there, we still haven't gotten to the barbershop part, but in there, you're talking about conversations with Rich Homie Kwan and his problems um, being linked to the Bloods, correct? I guess. Okay, and, and Rich Homie Kwan not really being built like that. For sure. Okay. And the fact that he was scared to... Again, I just want to put in the air. Why so Woody, Young Thug, and them niggas was bullying Rich Homie Quan. I'm not saying he a bitch or nothing like that. Rest in peace, Rich Homie Quan. But if y'all wonder why his career wasn't like that, Rich Homie Quan wasn't down to throw away his life to go put the money he had to give street niggas to do retaliation shootings and all this other bullshit that clearly they're accusing Thug of. And that's exactly why... Niggas like Woody and other people are like, he not like that. We could do whatever to him. We shot up the barbershop. Nothing happened. His car gets shot up. Nothing happened. His manager get killed. Nothing happened. They were bullying this nigga. Leave the bloods, but in your, your opinion, they wanted to use Rich Homie Kwan for his money. I'm, again, I'm talking to the police. I'm... Okay, but that, that's what's being discussed. All right. I'm not saying it's the truth. That's what's being discussed, though. All right. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why I'm putting this out in the air because I see some young thug fans is trying to make it like, oh, no, they were like they were like besties. No. Rich homie Kwan's career suffered because of of, of young thugs shenanigans. OK, Let, let's be very clear what it is. All right. Rich homie Kwan kept it straight and didn't publicly say these things and didn't publicly throw Thug under the bus because you know why? Rich homie Quan was linked with a bunch of street niggas too. So he was letting them all get at it. But he was the, he was a, a collateral in a lot of the beefs. And his father, I believe, got shot. Then everything gonna go away. Yeah. Then you're like, I just protect me, bro. We need y'all, bro. I need y'all to protect me. How the hell we gonna protect you? You and these niggas ain't doing it. Then you're like, so you shot my truck, bro. So supposedly they were they were saying about him shooting on the truck. Why do these are these the cops? Why do they look like they in, they in jail uniforms, right? Woody look like he's in a suit, and these people look like they're in jail uniforms, but <laughs> they're supposed to be the cops. Twenty five the dude tell you everyone. Say Jay Daddy got shot. Hey, and just so we're clear, you said Rich Homie Kwan's daddy got shot. So it wasn't just a barber shop that was shot. His barber shop was shot, but he actually got shot in the barber shop, correct? I don't know nothing about all that. Okay. Well, that's what you said. You said that Rich Homie I'm talking to the police again. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm lying to saying, take it like, I know Tay didn't do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Night before we just hit the party. Yeah, who, who did it? Somebody else did it. Some, some. Spit it out. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Somebody got money. You know what I'm saying? Some niggas that had money over there. You know what I'm saying? Nobody got money. No, I'm talking about bankhead. A lot of niggas don't bankhead got money. Come on, come on. I started thinking, I couldn't think of the name, but. To kill him in retaliation, to get that Quan, uh, what started that? Cause like the same age, we, we like I was just three, I think Quan crying. Like, oh, bro, and he tried to kill him dead. You, you know what I'm saying? But him and Tate being.
Oh, my bad, my bad, Chad. Oh, okay, okay, my bad. No, I was saying this. Uh, uh, so, so why so Woody said that he ran into Young Thug? No, he ran into Quan, and Quan's crying like, "Yo, they tried to kill my daddy." And again, I I, I just want to point out, if you are a Young Thug fan, trust me, I'm a Vibes Cartel fan. <laughs> trust me, I reviewed all the evidence. I just like Vibes Cartel. Trust me, okay. If you're a Young Thug fan, stay your delusional ass over there. I don't want to see no Young Thug fan told my rest in peace to, 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 to uh, Rich Homie Quan. Because it's goddamn clear that maybe not Young Thug himself, but Young Thug niggas would have got Quan off the earth in 2015 if they could have. Niggas ain't shooting up your truck and shooting your daddy because they want to do a collab with you. It don't work like that. So it's funny how like, I see the Young Thug fans trying to like, you know, they're trying to make Young Thug seem like a saint now. They're like, oh, my God, look how Young Thug looked distraught when he found out this was the moment. Yo, Young Thug was sh Nigga, don't you hear what these guys are saying? <laughs> they're saying, Quan ain't built like that. He's crying to us like a bitch because his father got shot. His car got shot. Nigga, it's clear. They, were, they wanted this nigga off the earth nine years ago. <laughs> So I just want Young Thug fans, I get you like Young Thug and have an irrational support of somebody who you really like because of their music or whatever else. I get that. But please, don't let's try to change the narrative, okay? <laughs> Young Thug fans, y'all should have nothing to say about the death of Rich Homie Quan. His career suffered because of Young Thug and it's very arguable that Young Thug and his niggas was trying to kill him for a couple of years, <laughs> okay? Just please, like, please, like, we don't need, you don't need the supporters of a nigga who tried to get you killed crying at your funeral. No, 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 stay over there, <laughs> okay? D just being honest. So all y'all Young Thug fans, respectfully, focus on the trial, focus on the trial, but we don't need y'all to be posting old pictures of Young Thug and Rich Homie Quan. There was nothing happy about that, how it ended. Rich Homie Quan's career got pretty much killed. His dad got shot, his truck got shot up, his manager got killed. That doesn't seem like he's like, oh, I love Young Thug. <laughs> that doesn't seem like it at all, okay? So just just chill out for a bit. Don't do anything. Okay. And, and you just, about 15 seconds before we paused it, you were talking about who shot up Rich Homie Kwan's barbershop, Rich Homie Kwan's father's barbershop, and you said... A man from Bankhead with money hired someone from Johnson Road to do it, right? I'm listening. Is that correct? Is that what you said? That's what I said. Okay. Somebody from Bankhead, and when you say Bankhead, you're talking about Donald Lee Hollowell Road, right? I guess. Okay, well, you, you, you said it. Bankhead means street. Bankhead means the area. Okay. That area off of Bankhead, and he paid someone... From Johnson Road to shoot up Rich Homie Quan. I ain't say nobody to do nothing. I didn't say you. Oh. The person from Bankhead with money, according to you in this interview, person from Bankhead with money paid someone from Johnson Road to shoot up Rich Homie Quan's barbershop. Again, I'm talking to the police. Okay. Hey, right. Him going to it, him and take money. But he don't even know they take. Right. I had a problem, but Trey is a school bus. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they do retaliation. Man, it ain't. But I couldn't say him because no matter how many times I try to speak up Trey, he always had in his head. Trey did. Right. So, like, man, y'all should, man. So, that was, that was about the other thing. I called Trey, you know. I was going to ask Trey, but I, I had Trey put up on me like probably like Friday or Thursday, Thursday or Friday. Hey, cool, I like you, bro. Bitch, I'm calling that 25,000 on your head. Why so much? He's a skeleton. Yeah. He real scared. He's a skeleton. So, I said, take him, like, bro. He tried to fix him, like, then, bitch, I'm calling for the boy in Kerala. You know what I'm saying? So, I heard. So, I was feeling like, that's what he did, bro. The whole time, he's been having the money on his head. And he ain't do it, so when he go in, he man out. That's what happened. Now it's on him. You feel what I'm saying? But I ain't talking to him. I don't know how it happened, I don't know what happened. But I know Tay was messing with nobody. Tay stopped doing whatever he was doing. He just ran around and he tried to be a rapper. Okay. Okay.
Now, <clears throat> he said that that day, then everything came crashing down. If you can answer the questions, truthfully, here we go. Work, here we go. Worked out. Little Woody. Right, then we. And then. Hold on. And y'all black people doing this to us. Because y'all know y'all are wrong. And y'all black people doing. So eventually, after that story, I just heard about Woody saying that. Oh, some rich nigga from Bankhead paid Lil Tay or some other guy to shoot up rich homie Kwan ba uh, on Barbershop. He eventually then goes back in court. He's wearing this nice suit. And he says, hey, judge, can I tell the truth and not get prosecuted? The judge said, yeah, you got immunity. Go ahead. He says, I shot up rich homie Kwan's Barbershop. You're going to hear it. When he's too well, Copeland is, right? When he's admitting that he hasn't been truthful in the past, according to Gaird, that he was going to be arrested for something. So he claims he told the officers whatever they needed to hear, whatever they wanted to hear, which included putting the blame on Williams. Okay, so this is what happened. Okay. The police kept locking me up for whatever they could. Every time I can't do it, the police was on me. And they keep bringing up third name. So what I did was... To get him off of me, I said, third did this, third did that, third because I knew they would never, I knew he didn't do it. And they, I, in my mind, I knew that. Now, what's important to point out, there was, Woody's always had police contact. When he wasn't getting investigated at first, it appeared like he was trying to defend or hide Young Thug, right? Like, oh, no, there's some other niggas that did it. That's what I heard in the hood. Then at a point, he started to throw Young Thug under the bus. Number one, probably for his own mortality or for his own freedom. But he realized the police wanted a young thug, but it wasn't just because the police wanted a young thug. They've always wanted a young thug. He started falling out with thug. Thug started taking his his shooting for granted. So now he started blaming shit on thug. Then he comes in court and says, because the police are now saying, or uh, the, the prosecutor is saying, why did you tell us young thug was doing shit then? He was like, uh, uh, uh. Now he can't say, oh, I was just tight at young thug. So I started snitching. He was like, um, well, I realized the way how to get out of the police station was just to give them what they want. And after them talk, asking about Thug so many times, I just started telling them, yeah, Thug did it. Now, if you want to believe that, I got a bridge in motherfucking Mexico to sell you. Nobody's believing what it's like. It's clear to see you and, and the prosecutors mentioned it. The prosecutor, the prosecutors just suck. When you was young thug shooter, you anytime you got questioned by the cops, you try to blame random niggas. When you and young thug start getting into it and you were questioned by the cops, you started throwing out feelers for the cops to get their man, which was thug. You get what I'm saying? So now when he gets in court, he's like, I don't recall. Oh, I was lying to the cops. Here's the thing. The police are saying, well, if you say you were lying to the cops, Man, you're lying to them when you said some nigga from Bankhead shot up Rich Homie Kwan's thing, and then you hear him say, well, now could I tell the truth? You're going to hear him say, I shot it up. Well, hear this. The police will never go mess with him. What I'm going to do? And that's right now. If you tell, if I walk out of this thing and, and they say, the police stop me now. Hey, man, give me something about the I'm about to make something up about him again. The bridge analogy was not trash. Who said that? What I'm saying is that if, if you believe a guy... Who's a who's a known liar, right? And he's now gonna tell you. You have to realize the thing with Woody is that if Woody is a known liar, how do you know he's not lying now when he says, "Oh, I was lying to them back then." So you have to go on what makes sense to you. You can't go on. You know what I mean? The only reason why you'd be like, "Oh, maybe he's telling the truth now," is because he has immunity and it's kind of incentivized for him to tell the truth now, right? But if he's saying he's been a liar, maybe he was lying then and he's lying now. That's the point. So my thing is, if you believe Woody's statement that he he was always lying to the cops at blah, 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 but now he's telling the truth, as I said, you're, you're gullible. And for all the fans who be like, oh, Woody's killing it on the stand, we know he's going to play a clown on the stand. By the way, he's not on the stand anymore. He's going to play a clown on the stand. But there's mad evidence that suggests that him and Thug had a fallout. He admitted it. At one point in his testimony, he says, I wanted to kill Thug. That, that again, he's just about the narrative. Anyway. On January 11, 2015, <coughs> when you went to speak to the police, when they called you, did they? This is right after Nuts murder. 
ask you about Thug or did they ask you about the murder of Donovan Thomas? I don't know. I don't re I don't remember. Did you go down to the police department on your own to tell them that you did not kill Donovan Thomas? Uh, Ooh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, 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 somebody just got me the moment. Yo, fun raps. Thank you. It's YMCMB EP2 Rich Gang Flashy Lifestyle. It's Memorial Day weekend. Okay, good. So this is it. All right. And they say go to 922 is when Birdman got introduced. 922. When Birdman got introduced to Thug. By the way, remember, so this is June 11th. Thug is with Nut introducing the Birdman. Seven months, seven months before he dies. What on earth went that bad? Here we go. In a real deal, special shout out to Stunner, man. You know what I'm saying? Without him, we wouldn't be right here on this motherfucking yacht. So a hundred million dollar yacht, you did what I'm trying to say? Yacht. Doing for home. We wouldn't be right here, nigga. I got one of the biggest bloods in America with me, my nigga. You did. Atlanta, Georgia, nigga. Yeah, here it is. One of the biggest bloods, he, he, he that's the guy who's repping Quan. Big shout out to Birdman and YMCMB Rich Gang, YSL for life, you know what I'm saying? Okay. This, this is pretty much the introduction of supposedly when um, uh, Rich Homie Quan's boss meets Birdman and they meet on a yacht. You can see right here, Rich Birdman. This allegedly, this is stories in the streets. They said Rich Birdman came through with. You see, the thing with a nigga like Birdman, Birdman will will spend two million dollars on you before you ever sign paperwork, nigga. It, it that looks so. And if you think about how he dealt with Wayne, it kind of makes sense. That looks so good. Of course, you want to be rocking with the guy who spends millions of dollars on you before you ever committed to anything he got going on so of course let's get the yacht let's bring the money let's go to the clubs let's do this thug is biting thug is in thug is in this nigga he a street nigga who historically i won't get into too much of his past but there is a past he gets street money now clearly he's not getting birdman money but he's not that impressed he's an older dude He's seen money before. He a street nigga. Him being on a yacht in Miami, he's not a glitz and glamour type of nigga. He a Atlanta from the dirty side type of shit. Is there a dirty side? No, just like, nigga who get out the mud. That's what I mean. He not that impressed by all of this shit. You feel what I'm saying? So when he meets Birdman, all right, cool. Let's see if the business makes sense. Business doesn't make sense to him? All right, bet. Yeah, see, see, Bird, see, look, look, look. My like a bush. See? See, Birdman giving out gifts. You see? Look, he's right here. Birdman comes in. Yo, yo, nephew. Here's this, here's that. Gifts. Could be 50,000 a box. Oh, your thug is like, fuck. Not gotta be locked in with Stunner. This nigga is why he's not impressed by that. He's an older dude. He's not in the limelight. He don't want gifts. He want paperwork. He want paperwork. He want money in hand. Feel me? So he's watching the whole thing. Thug is in. What does he do? Red box. Remember Thug? Remember Gun? Not Gun. I mean, um, um, Birdman bringing that, that. He's heavy with the blood shit going out there. Giving all type of jewelry, right? Typical Birdman shit. What is that? Oh, oh, that should say Rich Gang. I'm saying we Rich Gang. Come here real quick. You're the big motherfucker. See, for an artist, and this is just telltale signs of how artists moves. You get an artist a chain. Matt, Matt, yo, I know white label owners. I, I want to expose this one guy because that's my guy. Yo, 
this this is in all these these rappers' budgets. But he bought label chains, and he put it around the, the rapper's neck. The whole time, the rapper's like, "Damn, yo, my boss is like, yo, he mad generous. He just gave me a chain that's made forty, fifty thousand. No, it's to control your stupid ass. <laughs> he know you like jewelry. He got to he got to operate in the language that you speak, jewelry. You know what I'm saying? You see, Young Thug wide open. He gave that nigga two boxes. Here's the next box he opening up. Young Thug is wide open. Look. Yeah, Birdman, a good nigga. Oh man, what's that? Oh, he got the he got the, the, the that star that Birdman got on his head, the red star. Also, I think they shoot, is it the halftime video that shot on this yacht? Yeah, happy birthday, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Every day birthday. You do what I'm telling you kids? <laughs> you don't try to like respectfully to Thug. Thug was down to crash out because because Birdman was whining and dining him. Let's be honest. Let's call it what it is. Donovan Nut Thomas is sitting right next to Thug and looking at this shit and saying, Yeah, that's cool though, but what a deal at? Like, what, 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 feel me? I just stuff at home. I'm gonna try to say the home. Yeah, one and one. Yeah, one and one, man. Who is this, chat? Who is this? The shooter, PB Roscoe. You see when, hey, make sure Wayne Torbus don't don't get out of Atlanta without a couple shots. You put a chain on a nigga neck, he turned into a crash dummy for you. That's a fact. I learned that. Look, Donovan Nut Thomas is right here. Y'all gotta observe Donovan Nut Thomas demeanor the whole time. He's peeping it. And he's realizing that Birdman is buying these niggas trinkets. And, 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 and Thug is just ultimately loyal now. The shooter, Pee Wee Roscoe, he ready to be a crash dummy. Watch his body language. Watch. No Look, edition. just watch him. He right here. He right here in the way. Yeah, man. Look. Old time you on the phone. He kind of peeping these niggas though. Nigga. He peeping. Nigga he peeping. Look. Hand on the chin. He's watching how these niggas is switching up at a little piece. Yeah, man. Now we doing big shit. Yeah, bigger than the yacht club, man. Millions of billions of tomato. Why is there a rich guy in my real mafia shit? Yeah, man, we're giving a real deal, special shot to stun him, man. You know what I'm saying? Without him, it would work. He just gotta watch. Single off the wrist, gang out. Lifestyle, my niggas gonna host the whole project, too. You know what So, y'all fuck with us. Speed gang for life, boy. Two hours later. I'm from 12 because I heard. They're playing Get the Fuck Up My Face. You see, you see Pee Wee Rock. Get the fuck up my face. By the way, also, here's the thing, too. Birdman got the Birdman got the fucking. He got the World Star Connect at this time. Remember in 2014? World Star posting your vlog? By the way, not saying Ross did some of these tricks, but Ross used to have his blogs posted on there too. Like for them artists, you gotta imagine. Th yo, there's certain artists now. This is why I be talking, I could talk shit about labels. It, if y'all trying to be like me, don't talk shit about labels. Let me tell you this. Only I could do. I'm gonna tell you why. I've had about six labels try to ice me out. Because when I mean ice me out, they'd be like, yo, let's try to go around act. I'm gonna tell you why it never works. Cause when because I'll notice it. I'll stop posting their artists. Their artist is going to go to the label and say, why act don't fuck with us no more? They can't tell the artist, oh, because, you know, they're going to be like, oh, we're going to get oh, we gonna get your next music video, act. You know what they're going to do? 
come back to me. <laughs> Feel me? Why? Because the artists look at it just like how they looked at Worldstar back in the day. If Worldstar wasn't fucking with you, you ain't on that level. So now this is why I talk shit about the labels. Because like, even if they get mad, th their artists are going to be like, why act not fucking with us? Uh, all right, we're going to get this next song in there. All right. You know what I mean? So this is all work. Because I'm, I'm telling you, that's a big secret. 100%. I've seen it six times. Anyway, back then it was Worldstar. This is why I be telling y'all when, when I tell you I know all these things secrets. Because if you ever want an artist to feel like you're the guy with the plug, in 2014, as Birdman, you telling Thug, be like, yeah, yeah, we just living life, turning up, getting money, fucking bitches. And yeah, we just did a vlog. It shit on Worldstar. Remember, Worldstar was the shit. Right? Worldstar is the shit. So... These artists are gassed out of, of, of oblivion. Is this OT Genesis? Yo, OT Genesis has been clubbing for like 10 years straight. I don't know how this motherfucker does it, bro. He's good. Wait, they don't love you. Oh, look at Khaled back in 2014. Yo, yo, Bert, nobody has ever done like Birdman. Not Diddy, not Jay-Z, not Dr. Dre, none of these niggas. Birdman's a nigga who used to bring out the car, like he's bringing out Bugattis. When you see your label owner with a three million dollar car, this is what I'm trying. I'm telling you about looks. This is why Birdman's successful too. Like Birdman, a lot of times you look at Birdman and just look overly flashy, but artists want to be that. Like the white executive that just got like he might have a three hundred thousand dollar plain Jane watch, but it's like some rare watch that it don't pop off the shit. Birdman's going to pull up with a duffel bag of money, a $3 million car, all the ice in the world. Like, he going to look so good. Like, he looks so good on a nigga level to the nigga eye. Bro, you got to sign with him. You feel what I'm saying? Bro, if your CEO hop out of a $3 million car with $2 million in jewelry on, and he say to you, Yo, play, and he brought you to the club, you saw bitches do shit you never seen before, he, he brings you on the biggest yacht, and then you go to Atlantic Records, and they're sitting in there, and they're like, hey, I'm not going to lie. I like this song. This song sounds good. Where do you say you're from? Carnarcy? Who are you going to sign with? Nigga, I'm signing with Birdman, nigga. That nigga just showed me the world. He showed me the lifestyle. He got the money. He telling me if I just do, fuck with him, he going to show me the, the riches. This is why Birdman, and, and by the way, it's work for him. Birdman, if you ask me, is a single. Not even if you ask me. I don't think this is arguable. Birdman is a single most successful executive that's been black in the game. More successful than Master P, J Prince. More successful than, um, of course, Yo Gotti, P, Jay-Z, Diddy. He's the most successful nigga ever in this music industry as a black nigga who came in a fucking game. And a lot of it was that nigga showing the lifestyle. That nigga really showed the lifestyle. They don't want to see. She ain't ready for it. If I ain't the greatest, then I'm headed for it. Yeah, that mean I'm way up. Thing with Birdman too, because he wasn't faking the funk. Birdman don't fake the funk. Birdman will pull up with the $3 million Bugatti in the hood. Birdman... He a gangster too. He gonna pull up in the hood. He not the he not the corny nigga that you signed to. He pull up in the hood. Every nigga around him is shooters and killers. He's fucking with gang members. Yo, of course you gonna fuck with that nigga. <laughs> yeah, the six ain't friend. Yo, all due respect, Yo Gotti, P, Rick Ross, all of these niggas is Birdman's sons. No disrespect, and these guys know I fuck with them. I, I talked to pretty much all of them. They're his sons in, in a sense of being a label owner, an executive. When, when you see Yo Gotti buying Glorilla whatever car or bringing her on the jet, he's imitating what Birdman used to do. He would bring a fucking Lamborghini or, or bring a fucking Bugatti. Like, didn't he gift Wayne a Bugatti? Birdman gifts Wayne Bugatti. Like, no, no, or something of the sort. Am I tripping? I thought, I thought he gave. 
Yeah, look at this. About me and my son, man. Uh, they call bending the machines. They just hit the flow. I just want to feel brand new, yo. Whenever I do something for myself, I like to do it. Like yo, Birdman's the boss of the bosses, bro. My son too, you hear me? That's just us. Shining all the time. I, don't know. I mean, I'm stunned, so I'm gonna do that shit till I die. I just like to have new shit all the time. If anybody remember Cash Money from the early 2000s, or even the late 90s, because I've watched the old videos, yes, I have, Birdman used to have like 20 stretch limos at his crib. <laughs> like, Birdman is is is, is the is hip hop on steroids. In hip hop, they always say that the artists, they said when when it was a privilege to have color TVs, everybody had black and white, a hip hop artist gonna be like, yo, I got color TV in every room. They gonna talk about shit that nobody got because that's how you brag in hip hop, right? When everybody had the big back TVs, everybody gonna be like, yo, I'm watching this on the flat screen. You get what I'm saying? Like, Hip hop is always about bragging on somebody saying, I got what you don't got, and even the other rich niggas don't got. Birdman has always lived that. Like, he's gonna get the one of one Maybach Exceleron or whatever. He's gonna do all that. He's gonna do that with his artist. His artist is gonna be lit. So, when you look at that and you see how he's, you know, granted, when you move like that, you gotta make a lot of money. So, you spend a lot, but you gotta make a lot. But if you if you do both, you still get a lot of money that you save. That's why Birdman, he's really the most successful. Anyway, look. Time after you max up, and that's what it is. That's why I remember when um Wayne said he was owed fifty one million. I said, nigga, what happened to all them cars that Birdman gave you? You think that shit was free? No, hey, you ready? Man, I don't know. What like, no disrespect, Mac Main ain't have a bop in his life. No disrespect, Mac Main. I know you're about to respond to me. I'm sorry, Mac Main. I like you, bro. <laughs> All we know Mac Main for, he's a young money president. What he did on, um, oh, what's the name of that song? I couldn't be a bear rock. Mm. Yeah, that's all we know Mac Main for. Nigga, he getting gifted $300,000 cars. I don't know how to work this shit. This is a whole different type of key. For you. That's how you know you shouldn't have the key. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably just you know, love. You know what I'm talking about? Love. I don't know how to do this, though. I'm serious. Hey, you ready? Man, I don't know what this but I ain't never had a key that's heaven, man. I gotta Let me tell you this. Ross took after this formula. P took after I think P bought baby a car one time. Um Yo Gotti definitely took after this formula. LVRN took after this formula. They they, they bought some of some of Walker some shit. Any hey, any y'all executives who bought your artists a car y'all birdman sons that's facts he's the original the og the original don dada of letting the artists feel appreciated by bringing out some new shit from the lot that they don't even know how to work the key a bunch of keys I mean, it has key. yeah, you know. no brother than my little nephew you know? good love uh. rolls royce logo unlock in the middle Oh, oh shit. Auto. Oh you no know you lock button. My other uncle though. That's how you <laughs> That's how you lay it off for you. Oh man. I appreciate that, bro. Oh, really. Shout out to Slim. <laughs> I know you told him. <laughs> Slim and baby. I really appreciate it. Oh, of course, Drake, of Drake, of course, Birdman's son. Really, his grandson, but of course. That's what I'm saying. Birdman, the most successful executive of all time, bro. I'm sad. Yo, somebody says, yo, nigga. Yo, who bought the Rav Force for TLC? Yo, yo, who is it? Who is it? Oh, my God. I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting. Uh, um, ooh. Him and his girl. Who bought the, who bought the Rav Force for, t for TLC? Somebody said Suge Knight was doing it first. Suge Knight was never doing it on the level that Birdman was doing, nigga. Fuck out of here, nigga. Suge Knight might have bought a BMW, nigga. That's it, nigga. We talking about foreigns, nigga. We talking about shit that niggas like Birdman was buying his artist cars that you didn't. They don't. They don't do commercials for. They don't do commercials for the cars Birdman was buying. <laughs> La Reed, La Reed and Pebbles. <laughs> you damn right about that one. <laughs> ah! Yo, I'm so happy. I, I, 
even if y'all not that old, some of y'all are hip hop historians, and, and, and y'all could y'all could like correct me and shit. I, I'm really happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little lady, dog. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Go some. Right, look at Wayne now. Wayne gonna get his shit now. CMB. Yeah, no, yeah, no. He bought this thing a Rolls Royce. You know a Rolls Royce is like a three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar car. With all due respect, I don't think Mac May had a solo song that made three hundred thousand dollars. You feel what I'm saying? So he doesn't sport this nigga. This nigga's probably feel like a million dollars right now. I when I was fifteen. I was fifteen. Son of a bitch, nigga alive, man. That's how real a nigga. He drove his car down the night skate. And that's just a reality of being from the hood, man. Like being impressionable. Like, like y you dream of a lifestyle. It's a reason why Young Thug's song is called Lifestyle. You dream of a lifestyle that you've only seen other people live. That now somebody who looks like you, who's living it, comes and brings that opportunity to you. And sometimes they'll get, before you even get to the place that you could live the lifestyle, they'll just give you some of the benefits of the lifestyle. Yo, here's this car that. I know you can't buy yourself right now. You can't afford. You can't even insure. Here. That's why Birdman's Birdman. Anyway, let's get back to it. So so, so this was the uh, Memorial Day weekend. Oh, uh, this was August Alcina before he turned gay. Okay. And Birdman chilling the club. Look. See? this Yo got with all due respect, and I think Yo Gotti would agree. Yo Gotti, Birdman, son. He, they were getting the game. Yo Gotti was an artist back then. Yo Gotti was getting the game from Birdman, bro. That's facts. That's facts. Matter of fact, I ain't gonna lie to you. I, a, I told you I got an interview that I never put out by Birdman. He literally said it. He said Ross ran off with the sauce. But he said, Ross, Yo Gotti. He said, I taught them niggas the game. Nigga. Don't it look like a nigga learning the game? The fuck? I don't know why August Alcina leading in, man. It looked like he was just trying to find a nigga for the night. Look, Birdman giving the game. This shit documented. Khaled. Khaled got the game, but Khaled was about to sign niggas like Ace Hood and shit like that. But then Snapchat popped off for, 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 for Khaled, and he said, fuck this label shit. It's all about me. We all remember that time, right? Remember he was trying to focus on some artists, and as soon as Snapchat popped off, he's like, fuck them niggas. It's all about me. Oh, this is, this is right, right where our Fountain Blue is. Fountain Blue Club live. You go across the street, all the yachts be over here. Okay, so yeah, you go over there, you get on the yachts. Look, niggas excited. It's not even that big of a yacht. It's probably like, is this, is, uh, probably more than a 60 foot yacht. What is this? What yacht is this? One thing Birdman was good, he was always good at showing us a lifestyle. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, for example, look, Travis Scott was just on a yacht. He got arrested. Remember, he got arrested. I reached the thing. Travis Scott's not like trying to vlog the yacht. I think back then, Niggas didn't even know the Miami lifestyle. So it was like, it was good that they were showing it. These days, bro, Fabio Foreign goes to motherfucking Miami and gets on some crazy yacht. You know what I mean? But if you bring a nigga from the hood who never been on a yacht, never been to Miami, you gift him two chains and whatever, whatever. Some shit's going crazy, right? Oh, here we go. Tonight we're going to be at live. Yeah, he was at live all the time. A lot of my homies in. Probably be about 200 of us, about 150. Compton Menace. See, he was always tapped in with the bloods. This is what that's like. And we just, we just doing that life. You know, like, you know, you know, you know I Same thing. shit, just a different thing. C5, boy. We out here about to take over this year, 2014, no game. Right, so I'm sure y'all niggas got to do it for real. You know the streets on smash. We're gonna get a nigga out of the trenches. I want to let y'all know for real, you hear me? My nigga from the A, you hear me? We be down there putting it down, representing the gang, you feel me? Lifestyle. My nigga's gonna host the whole... All right, anyway. Okay. So back to Woody. I know we strayed off a little bit. It's all good. Back to Woody. Now we're going to get Woody admitting to shooting up Rich Homie Kwan's barbershop. ...episode on our podcast into a self lie and put the blame on others for a lot of activities. I ain't telling them myself. I, I ain't got nothing else to say. I don't recall. Okay. Now, you keep saying that you told Detective Thorpe whatever it is that you wanted to say. Um, it's that, good. That you were finessing him. Correct. Do you recall telling Detective Thorpe I'm not trying to go to jail. 
I'm not trying to do any of that. I don't want none of this. Me and nut ain't never had a problem. And I still ain't trying to go to jail. Okay. So why would you be lying to Detective Thorpe if you did not want to go to jail? Can you say that? Why would I be lying to him if I didn't want to go to jail? Correct. What you mean? Like you keep saying that you were just lying, lying, lying. Why would you lie versus just telling him the truth? That's how I was raised. I was raised up to lie to the police. I was at an early age. I was taught to lie to the police. But if you're trying not to go to jail, why would you lie to the police? Versus okay, here we go. We won't get to it. Okay. And that you did not. Which for him to be a, a would never be the case if he concerned about me sneaking. Here we go, here we go. The rapper's father. We're asking you about Nut's murder. Were you telling them that you were not involved in Nut's murder? Yo, hen dog and ma say nah. He was done with Asa when Asa's watch disintegrated on the BT red carpet. Oh man, that, that was crazy. Ace Hood watch. Nah, that was an epic moment. I ain't gonna lie. I think Ace was career died there. That yeah, no stranger. Listen. To the BT Hey, sir, man, what's happening with you, bro? Oh, we're in the gutter, man. BT Wars going down. Happy to be here. Man, it'll let us young people just come through and take over, man. We're gonna take over, man. Watch the watch. Watch the watch. He doing too much handwork. Look, look. Bow Wow even looking down. Like, what the fuck? July 16th. Make sure y'all pick that up. We just here, baby. We feeling good. You feel me? I think he tried to screw the watch back on. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. That, that might have been the moment that nigga Cali was like, fuck that nigga. <laughs> we the best. <laughs> okay, but, but watch this. This is when he switches up and and um now we're talking about Woody admitting to uh shooting at people. Telling them everybody I told them everybody did. I told them shell kill killed them. I told them all type of people did. I didn't know I don't I don't, I don't know. Having said that, at one point, Copeland did seemingly admit to a shooting involving another Atlanta rapper known as Rich Homie Quan. The rapper's father was injured when shots were fired into an Atlanta barbershop he owned. And Copeland says he had been trying to protect a friend who he calls Threat from being questioned in connection with that shooting. Threat is now deceased, by the way. And before he said what happened, he confirmed with his attorney, I have immunity, right? Do you recall telling the, the, the investigators that at the Cascade Skating Ring, you confronted Kel about them shooting at you all from the bushes. What happened in Nut got nothing to do with YSL. This is the screaming language. This, this got everything to do with threat. I mean, I was trying to protect threat from the get go. I mean, threat, threat, and they had some more stuff going on. Like, was threat at the gambling house when it got shot up by Kel? Young, you say nothing I say can be used against me? That's right. Me and Threat shot up Rich Homie Corn Daddy Barbershop on Bankhead. I don't know what happened with Threat and Rich Homie Corn, but I'm going to ride with my brother. And they was beefing. And, yeah, we pulled up and did that. Okay. <clears throat> I ain't going to lie. This is diabolical chat. Being bald-headed and shooting up the place that niggas get their hair cut seems like hate to me. This nigga got no hair, yet he shoots up the barbershop. Come on, bruv. Come on, bruv. That's a place that you would never need to be. That's hate. You bald-headed, but you shooting up the place that the niggas with hair get their hair cut at. That's crazy. What type of hatred shit is this? God damn. That's a hate crime. I agree with y'all, chat. This was a goddamn hate crime. But it's still, it's still wild. Threat at the gambling house when it got shot up by Kel? Young, you say nothing I say can be used against me? That's right. Me and Threat shot up Rich Homie Corn Daddy Barbershop on Bankhead. I don't know what happened with Threat and Rich Homie Corn, but I'm going to ride with my brother. And they was beefing. Now, here's why this is interesting. 
Because his immunity says, if anything he says, factually, which means if he lies, number one, he would be, he would be breaking the agreement of immunity. But second of all, he would be putting himself at the risk of getting charged or incarcerated for perjury. Which means the immunity says you have to tell the truth. He says, I shot it up. Or I was there with this guy threat that shot it up. It kind of seems like that should be the truth. That's a definitive statement that he's now opened himself up to a perjury charge or getting charged for it, period. If he didn't do it. Anyway. And or not get charged for a period of his immunity being 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 yo. Your immunity's void. You lied. Yeah, we pulled up and did it. Okay. <clears throat> and as a result of why did you and Threat shoot up Rich Homie Quan Daddy's barber shop? Because I'm a ride with Threat. Okay. Did Threat tell you why he was shooting? I don't ask no questions. I just say let go. Okay. Damn. And when Rich Homie Quan's barber shop was shot up was that in september of 2014 do you I, remember i don't know when i know we went up there and shot it up okay was it before nut was killed yes do you remember what happened the day that you and threat shot up rich homie kwan's daddy's barber shop what do you mean but do you remember that day? What what led up to you going to the barber shop and shooting it up? I told him they go do it. <laughs> oh my god! I ain't gonna lie, man. Woody's entertaining as fuck. What led up to you saying? I told him they go do it. Let's go do it. Why? Threat was mad. He was like, he keep scaring my name. He he was talking, playing like like we somebody to play with, and I was ready. I had them choppers on deck. Now, <laughs> I had them choppers on deck. Did this shooting of Rich Homie Quan's daddy's barbershop start the beef between If Gang and YSL? The beef was never between If Gang and YSL. Okay. The beef was between me, Threat, And Shell Kill. Rich Homie Corn. Because they were trying, Shell Kill was trying to ride Rich Homie Corn. The streets through why sell into what me and Threat had going on. Now you clearly know he's he's lying, right? This is a guy who is who turned on Thug because he was a pawn. And Thug, you know, he was a shooter who, who was a pawn, usually. And Thug started treating him like a pawn. And when he felt undervalued, he started throwing Thug under the bus. Now he's on the stand. This is what I'm saying. You got to use your, your common sense. He's on the stand and he's saying, well, YSL inherited the beef that me and Threat had. That's just not how it goes, sir. El Chapo doesn't inherit the beef of the foot soldier that's expendable. He himself said he was mad at Young Thug because Young Thug was treating him as expendable. Why would Young Thug, who's controlling YSL, inherit the beef because of him? Especially when you're shooting at Rich Homie Kwan, someone that Young Thug has made millions with. Makes no sense. This is how you know he's lying. You get what I'm saying? Well, that takes me back to the shooting at Lakewood, all right? Can you repeat it? Sure. You just said that the streets brought YSL into what you and Threat had going on. Correct? That's what you just said? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that a yes for the record? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. My bad. So according to Copeland, there wasn't any sort of problem between him and YSL. That was just a rumor that had been going around. And he once again seemingly looked for reassurance that what he said on the stand cannot be used to come back to bite him. Remember, what he says... Can't. Uh, well, if somebody you just. Said, I can't remember who it was with me. 
Okay. So how do you know you didn't want them caught up in your shenanigans? Because I wouldn't feel putting nobody else in my... I, I, don't, I just wasn't going to do that. Okay. So after you pulled the gun out on him, did you shake hands with him to say that the beef was over between the two of you? Nope. Okay. I pulled the gun out and let him know I could have got you right now. Okay. Wait, who you pulled the gun out? You pulled the gun out on Shell Kell. What happened? So he's saying Shell Kell was Rich Homie Kwan's like muscle. I had somebody with me that I didn't want to get caught up in my my, my shenanigans. Who was with you? I can't recall. Well, if somebody you just... Said, I can't remember who it was with me. Okay. So how do you know you didn't want them caught up in your shenanigans? Because I wasn't going to put nobody else in my... I, went, I just wasn't going to do that. Okay. So after you pulled the gun out on him, did you shake hands with him to say that the beef was over between the two of you? Nope. Okay. I pulled the gun out and let him know I, I could have got you right now. Okay. And you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. All right. While Kenneth Copeland is allegedly connected to some arguably shady dealings around Atlanta, you know what's not in doubt? His popularity on social media, that has skyrocketed since he first took the stand a couple of months ago. He actually went live on Instagram before he was called in the courtroom on Monday, just sitting there drinking from a water bottle. He also posted selfies in his gray three-piece suit. And there was a post as well featuring Christina Weaver. This is the court reporter when Judge Glanville was presiding over the trial. You may remember that they had a funny moment during his testimony in June. It, it never crossed my mind. So how were you able to tell Detective Gaither that nut and thug was cool? Because they're questioning me and I'm trying to get them out of me and she asked me questions about nut and thug, I guess, and I'm telling her whatever she, she asked me, let's say she asked me a question about this guy. I'm gonna say, yeah, I seen this guy, it's blue. Whatever she asked me, I'm going to say, I'm going to agree to that. I'm going to say whatever she asked me. If she asked me about the, the, this reporter right here, I'm going to say, yep, she's sitting outside me with white tennis shoes on. I'm going to say something. Just because I want her to believe I'm telling the truth. Uh, that I, I want her to. She said they white. Right, so you're telling the truth then. Yeah, he smashed. Anyway, all right, this is really not about nut. It's really about Rich Homie Kwan. So Rich Homie Kwan did an interview recently, right? <clears throat> And he got a chance to well, respond yeah. to some of the stuff Rich Homie Kwan responds to Woody. He responded to why so Woody in an interview that he did with uh, this young woman. I got it. He was trying to say nothing crazy. But I do have an interview here where he did uh, he interviewed with uh, the guys in the barbershop and he was talking about his drug addiction. Um, Rich Homie Kwan drug addiction. He did do an interview on it. Wait, hold on. What the fuck? Why sell judge addresses a media personality? Oh, I gotta watch this afterwards. Hold on, but but let, let let's go. Oh, Quan was talking about addiction, and I know you also did an interview with the uh, what's the guy's who be in the barbershop name again? Um, uh, Matt Hoffa. Okay, okay. So we're gonna watch this too. So, so um, let's start. Miss All right, we're gonna watch this after. The my, the content wasn't as it wasn't to my approval, mm. but I'm partying so hard and I'm on the I'm on the Molly so gone. I'm thinking this shit hard. That was your biggest issue at that time. Yeah, Molly. I was on that Molly like every day, bro. You weren't a lean guy as much. Yeah, chat. Do they cut? Do they cut Molly with um um fentanyl? Uh, yeah, yeah, lean yeah. at Molly. But like, yeah, like yeah. I still I still silk. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But what I'm saying, like Molly. Molly had me gone, bro. I was like on Molly, like the rich game days. Like, nigga, I was on Molly probably like two years straight, like every day. Like, nigga, I'm saying, I'm taking Molly before I go brush my teeth. Jeez. You feel me? And so that's that's no way to live. No way to live, bro. But the, like, but then that's when I started feeling like my music was like falling out. I was, I was caught up. Like, I was lost in the South. Right. Because when I'm doing the Molly right now, I'm up. I'm up. Like, nigga, I'm up, up. Like, Flex, my biggest song. You know what I'm saying? By myself, double platinum. Like, nigga, I'm up, up. And so at what point does Birdman come around? And is it kind of tricky because he wants to sign you and you're already signed? Uh, to be honest, it was more like, uh, it wasn't kind of tricky. Birdman, uh, nah, let me start that back. Birdman come around 
on my second mixtape. I promise I'd never stop going in. And that's when I meet Thug. We get the first song we do is get, boy, get the fuck out of my face. Mm. Um, I don't know how long before then, Bird and Thug had already been communicating, but like, but you I, didn't know Thug outside of this. No, nah, I didn't know. Okay. Thug, nah, but no, nah, but I, I was I was a fan of Thug, right. though, like because Thug had our, Thug had been rapping for in Atlanta for a, a minute. You know right. what I'm saying? So everybody had knew a Thug. You know what I mean? He just kept getting better as the years yeah, went by. Yeah, but I yeah. had met Thug when I uh, when I was working with Gucci uh, when, when he was signed with Gucci because Thug would be over there at the studio me. Goes RP to take off. Mm. All of them would be like take off on the, like they would be on the couch. Thug over here, me and Gucci working. You know what I'm saying? Me and Thug was doing songs then. It's some it's some songs you can Google. Thug, Gucci and Corn. You mm. know what I mean? So it was like that's when I first met him. But now I'm signed. By then I went signed. You know what I mean? So now I'm signed and uh, get the fuck out of my face. The first song we do, and after we do that song. Me and Thug build a relationship. We just working every day, and it went from working every day to uh, corn. Uh, but you know, I've been. I want you to meet Bird. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how long Bird and Thug had already been communicating. Mm-hmm. So I meet Bird, Bird in Atlanta, and he was like, "Hey nephew, uh, man, I, I want y'all need to stay in the studio." So we started recording at Dart. And Dart was Dallas Austin's old studio mm-hmm. um, at the time. So Bird was like, "Yeah, man, I'm a rent." He rented the studio out for three months. So we were just working. Thug got a room. I got a room. So we just, you know, just working, working, working collectively. And he just like, nephew, we got to put this shit out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And he knew like. All right. Yeah, let's get back to the drug you see. He addresses a little bit more here. Um, l- let me ask you a question. Um, let me ask you a question. Because I-, I know. I know Joe Budden at one time, I think he had gotten that more um, Adam 22 for like either releasing a video of somebody or like re-uploading it after they died. And it was like, oh, like, yo, that that's like, that's like nasty, right? Like, yo, you, why, why are you, the day the person dies, like you're trying to gain extra views and you're uploading more shit. Um, do y'all think that was, you know, do, do y'all think that's a foul thing? I remember I kind of, was in an interesting spot where I'm, I'm I'm cognizant of people saying, yo, it's kind of weird and kind of like look like you're trying to profit off of somebody's death if you're uploading some clips of somebody dying. But I remember when I interviewed um, PNB Rock, like that was like the last interview he did and like he died shortly after. And um, while rolling out the interview, like literally while rolling out the interview because the way how, cause I was on Spotify at the time while rolling out the interview, we, we used to roll it out in clips cause we couldn't put the whole thing on, on um, Spotify. And I, and I remember saying, damn, am I, am I like capitalizing off his, the death? Like I'm not trying to capitalize off his death. And um, n- nobody really gave me shit for it. Cause like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, Oh, you did an interview like two years ago and you're putting it back up. But I wonder what, what people think about that because I, I just noticed, I remember Adam Adam being called out by Joe, but then I see uh, um, Math Hoffa, not saying that Math Hoffa should get shit at all, but um, looked like they had did some shit with Rich Homie Kwan like a year ago and looked like he put up a clip that was had to do with Rich Homie Kwan talking about addiction a day ago. Now we did 200,000 views. Um, obviously it's pretty relevant to you know the situation of him dying. Uh, I'm wondering what people think about is that like capitalizing on his death or is just no. I don't have an opinion really, and and I don't I don't think it is. But I do know sometimes people will like I think if Adam or Vlad did this, niggas would be like mad. I'm like yo yo, why are you doing that, bro? Right? But but I don't have a problem with it anyway. Anyway, let's play it. Am I playing it? Okay, they did put a rest in peace like you know splash screen before. Rest in peace, our deepest condolences from Math Hoff and my expert opinion team to the family and friends of Rich Homie Kwan. That's so sad. <clears throat> um, yeah, th- 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 there's so much to get into. Look at y'all thirsty ass. Yo, I'm going to show y'all how thirsty y'all are. Look, before I've showed this page, it says 17 comments. Let me see if, if any of y'all niggas commented. If I refresh it, it should still say 17. If it say 18, y'all, whoever is the 18th comment, thirsty. 
It's a 22. You motherfuckers. You motherfuckers. Look at these niggas right here. Rest up. You know Rich Homie Quan has an Instagram page. Why you go to her page, nigga? Nah, this is crazy. Grew up to this man's music. Look at these niggas. Look at these niggas, man. You thirsty motherfuckers, man. You thirsty niggas. It's 